All right, welcome back to Everyday Race. Today I've decided to make a a quick video about all the problems, all the common problems with the uh, Ford Rangers. I'm mainly going to concentrate on the 95 through 97 models because that's what I know. And uh, I'll mention some later models. I know a little bit less about those. So let's get started. First, the headlights. They garbage. They turn yellow and they, they just they just put them in the trash. The good thing is you can get aftermarket ones or OEM for a fairly good price. So it's easy to see, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out. So next, let's get in the engine compartment. All right. Thing that likes to go out is this resistor, blower motor resistor. Its job is to control speed of the blower motor. So you've got four settings, slow, faster, faster, and really fast. When the blower motor resistor goes out, you have two speeds. You have low and you have high. And that's it. You're screwed. So that part is pretty cheap. You can get a new but I've replaced one on my that truck right over there on my 96 like two times already. So I've had enough. It's already out. It's not working right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build uh, a different one. And I'm going to use a solid state relay. And it's going to run beautifully. So. Yeah, it's a problem. Actually, there's another problem. Well, I'm in here. Let's mention it. You got this thing. It's actually working on the truck, but it it's got a flap on the uh, heater box, and it goes this way and that way, hot and cold or whatever, and right in the middle. Well, that flap likes to break. That truck got a blow, broken flap, and it's kind of a pain to fix. And uh, you'll be stuck with either hot or cold or somewhere in between. Usually one or the other. This truck, fortunately for me, is working good. So I'm happy. Another thing is the heater, heater, heater core itself. Since these trucks are getting 20, over 20 years old. And uh, I don't know why, but these trucks are not maintained properly. Uh, the heater cores go out and it's a it's a big job on this one you got to pull the whole dash or you got to take it apart you got to take it all apart and you got to change the heater core it's a big headache a lot easier to flush the system and change the coolant uh, every four years or less you'll be good to go so let's get back let's get back under the hood of this monster all right so this is a 95 and it came with a 2.3 liter uh, four cylinder single overhead cam engine. You've got two more, two other engines, which is a four liter and a three liter, both V6s. I stay away from those because they, uh, they use a lot of fuel and they're not very fast at all. It's like a, they're like a, they use fuel like it's a V8, but they have power like it's a four cylinder. So this one's decent engine. It has some problems, such as pistons are pretty weak and they like to crack. My 96, three out of four pistons were cracked. Had a lot of blow-by. There was all kinds of crap coming out of the dipstick. And then uh, fumes were going in, into this uh, intake boot and the engine was running lean. Turned into a big headache. I pulled the head off, thought it was a head gasket. Nope, the head gasket was fine, actually. Actually, this cylinder head is still here. And, uh, yeah, the head is still good. This, this spark plug is not very good. But anyways, so I took the engine apart, pulled the pistons out, and they literally fell in two pieces. So I'm not sure. I'll try to find a picture of one. But it was pretty epic. So, anyways, besides that, or how do you fix this problem? You can put a late model, like a 98 up to 2000, 
I think 2003 they they were putting 2.5 liters which is the same engine except it's got a longer stroke it has different rods different pistons so they fixed the issue in 2.5 I ended up putting a 2.5 in my 96 it's got more power lost two miles to the gallon but no big deal All right, next problem on this truck on these trucks is this heater control valve its main job is to open and let the coolant flow to the heater core which is right here and when you're not using it it shuts off and it bypasses the whole thing it's mainly likes to crack and leak because it's made out of plastic easy part to replace I recommend buying it new motorcraft stay away from uh, aftermarket ones They're, they just don't last alright next next let's see what else we got ignition coils they go bad the truck will start running like crap easy to replace four bolts per coil I've replaced this one I've got a diagnostic video for those of you that uh, wants to check it out I went to salvage yard aka junkyard and pulled one out and tested it out it was good all right next thing is the engine mounts this truck got bad engine mounts so what happens is the engine mounts are there to cushion first to keep the engine in place and then to cushion because when the engine's running it vibrates and when they go bad they're like two pancakes you got one here and you've got one here and then the engine's gonna shake the whole truck apart so let me show you what it feels like. Alright, so if your engine mounts are bad, your truck would shake as the engine runs. Let's see what that sounds like. You can hear all the rattle. The whole truck is rattling because the engine mounts are bad. The way to find out if it's a, a driver's side or the passenger side, the easiest way is to put a load on the engine. So let me show you how to check the passenger side engine mount. All you have to do is you have to put a load on it in reverse. And if the shifter moves to the left, that means that the engine is lifting up. The engine mount shouldn't let the engine to lift up. It should stay in place. So let's see this truck. It's got a bad passenger side engine mount all right let's get to it As you can see the shifter The shifter is moving this way because the engine is lifting up. So passenger side engine mount is bad on this truck. Uh, to find out if the driver side is bad, you gotta do the same thing, but you gotta do it in forward gear. So for example, first gear. I put the truck, uh, I put the emergency brake on. It actually works on this truck amazingly. So now the shifter, if the driver's side engine mount is bad, the engine would torque this way and the shifter would move to the right. So let's see. Yep, that one's bad too. <laughs> so that's the easiest way to tell if your engine mounts are bad. Let's move it on up. Next thing would be, it's a Ford thing actually. It's not a Ranger thing, but this DPFE, which stands for a Differential Pressure Feedback Exhaust. This sensor commonly goes out. There's two styles. There's an aluminum one like this one, and there's a plastic one, which is uh, on my 96. So if you get a code, could either be EGR valve, EGR tube, hoses attached, two hoses attached to the sensor, or this valve. 
that open that operates CGR valve but it's usually this sensor it's I think it's under $30 under $40 I recommend buying it new you can also test them piece of cake so idle control valve that's a common Ford thing they get old and the engine will not idle gotta replace it you can try cleaning it but most of the time it's just a waste of time so all right next let's cover the let's move on to the chassis wheel bearings they're part of a rotor you actually have to pack the bearings and uh, if you have a lot of play in the wheel it moves up and down or left to right the wheel bearings are shot and most of the time they're pretty reliable but most people are not doing them right they're torquing them down and destroying the whole thing and they last a couple days so next is a ball joints uh, I think it's a common thing easy to replace I'm not even gonna talk about it all right next 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 door handles door handles they're made out of plastic very common to fail once it starts snowing the door would freeze to the truck you try to yank on it and break it break it right off as you can tell this one is broken on the right side and it's actually no, it's actually broken on the left side yep easy to replace you can uh, I recommend buying the metal ones uh, it's about an hour job let me let me show you what what the good one looks like very firm if you pull it to the sides it stays straight so easy problem to see but if you're buying this truck if you're buying a used truck make sure you know about all the problems that you're gonna have to spend the money on so you can lower the price of the truck if you find all those problems you can tell the seller hey look I gotta replace the door handles, this, yada, 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 this. Bada beam, bada boom. So, next, gauge cluster. It's problem problematic. It has, they usually have three common issues. Let me show you. So, I already pulled uh, the gauge cluster out of this truck. Number one thing is the odometer. It breaks, it stops. Uh, for example, this one got stuck at 270,000 miles. It doesn't work. Don't know when to change oil. Don't know if you're getting good gas mileage. The problem is actually fixable. It's usually this gear that goes on the server motor. That's what operates. Let me see if I can can't really see it but it's usually this gear or this gear if it rides because it rides on this on this gear you can buy this gear on eBay I think I've seen them for like eight nine dollars you can fix it, it takes about an hour you got to take the whole thing apart piece of cake or you can buy a used gauge cluster problem number two would be light bulbs you turn the lights on and you can't see nothing. It's because these light bulbs don't last 20 years. <laughs> they don't last 40 years. They go out all the time and it's a 194 type of bulb. So they come out. Let me see if I can pull it out. Kind of impossible with one hand. Now let me put the camber down. Alright, so it's nothing but a bulb, 194 you can buy it at the parts store, or you can get LED lights. Piece of cake. Alright, problem number three with the gauge clusters is the fuel gauge will stop working. The number one thing is usually this anti-slosh module. It goes in the corner of the gauge cluster. Of 
course I can't pull it out. There's a small tab on there. There we go. I think there are like four different types. They usually have the part numbers. For example, this is a F78F. The one with the tech that's in my truck right now is a F77. Uh, you can buy these used. You can get them at the junkyard. Uh, their main job, they're called uh, anti slosh module. They're nothing but a buffer. So if you didn't have the buffer and you've got half a tank of fuel in the truck and you start driving, the fuel slushes back and forth. So your gauge would go back and forth, back and forth. What this does is it takes all those readings and it takes an average of it and it'll have your uh, thing, whatever you call it, uh, you won't move around. So if it goes from like a empty to half, it'll end up showing you that you have a quarter of a tank. So these are pretty cheap. Buy them at the junkyard or eBay. Install them pretty easy. Boom. All right, let's move on up. Oh, almost forgot. If you buy a Ford Ranger, do not buy an one with the automatic transmission especially a four-cylinder one the early models they came with this garbage transmission called a4 ld they don't last they shift like crap they're just garbage they can't even handle a hundred horsepower engine i mean that should tell you something so if you if you if you look it for a small truck like this buy one with the stick shift it comes with the uh, uh, the transmission's pretty reliable as long as you do maintenance. There's only one small issue: slave or master cylinder likes to go bad. But I've been fortunate enough not to deal with it. Basically, the problem with the slave cylinder is it's right between the engine and transmission. So you have to separate the transmission from the engine to replace it. And it's a big job. It's like a, on a two-wheel drive, I think it's about three, four-hour job, you know, if you do it at the shop. And, you know, it'll cost you four, five hundred dollars. So, but <laughs> the transmission, it's just not worth getting automatic. It's just total garbage. So, let's move on up. Filler tube. <laughs> Alright. I already got a new one because this one got a problem with it. Okay. So we got a filler neck. Usually it doesn't fail unless it rusts away. The main problem is with this hose. And there's actually two hose. Uh, on my red truck and this truck, I think it's got a crack. It had a crack on the red one. Uh, and if you put the fuel, you put a full tank in it, it'll start coming out. This truck won't even take any fuel. As you're putting fuel in, it spills all over the ground. So, second problem is with the small hose. Uh, it gets soft from fuel over time because, you know, it's rubber. It doesn't last 100 years. And then it'll collapse. And it won't even let you put any fuel in there. You put the nozzle in there. I uh, try to put some fuel in it, nothing. Clicks off like the, like your fuel tank is full. So, I bought this on eBay. I think it was like forty dollars or something like that. Gonna change it. I gotta have my truck. I gotta be able to put fuel in it. All right, let's move on back. The next thing would be leaf springs. These are a pain. And either a leaf spring breaks in half or whatever, one of them, or we've got, like on this one, the whole thing broke off. Excellent on both sides. Let me get comfortable. As you can see, hold on. 
Where is it? There we go. The whole thing is gone. The bushing is gone. Everything is gone. And it's just broken in half. So if I, if I was going to jump a hill or something, it could actually come out of there. And uh, you can get into a car accident. So the second thing is these mounts. This one looks to be in okay shape. The one on my uh, 96 truck was uh, busted. So if that piece breaks, you're in trouble because that whole leaf spring is going to go straight up into the bed. Uh, you're going to have a hell of a fun ride. So these are $40, $50. They're kind of a pain to replace because you have to remove all these. Uh, you have to grind these big rivets. Uh, it helps if you got a torch, but if you try to grind them off, it takes a while. Another thing is let me show you on the other side. The shaka likes to fail. This is a shaka. It moves back and forth. <coughs> it cracks. It breaks. And then you're in trouble. Let me show you this truck. Got that problem. You can see the whole thing collapsed from rust. And it's just sitting. Look at it. Nothing but rust. And it's just sitting on this mount. And if this mount fails, it'll go in the bed. Not pretty. So what I have to do is I have to replace leaf springs because they're... They're both uh, busted on the front. These uh, eyelets are gone. And then I'm going to replace the uh, shackles. Because yeah. this one's pretty much gone. It's broken. And uh, I'm going to repaint the mounds. I'll have to look at them. They look to be a little bit of rust. But not rotted out. So I'm actually... Pretty content with that. And let's talk about the last thing. Is the oh, forgot to mention. I went to salvage yard, picked up a new or used leaf springs, forty dollars. So new ones they're pretty expensive, partially because of shipping. Shipping is like a hundred fifty dollars. And the new leaf springs, I think they're like a hundred, a hundred fifty dollars a piece. So junkyard is a good, good way to go if you find ones in good shape, in good bushings that they are not damaged. All right, almost forgot one thing on the chassis. Very common are the radius arm bushings. You can actually see this one's a uh, this one's a loose, and uh, it's got to be replaced because it controls the wheel movement. And its job is to keep the wheel from going forward and backwards. When that fails, you'll have play. So let me show you how to diagnose the issue in the truck. All right, next let me show you what the bad uh, radius arm bushings, if they're bad, uh, what happens. If you move forward and if you step on the brakes, you would hear a thump and you would feel it through the steering wheel. You got to hold it, step on the brakes, and you could see the wheel is going back and forth. Uh, let me see if I can show you the actual wheel. So let me go get a different camera and we'll go from there. Alright, 
So I gotta fix that too. Already got the bushings. I got the moot problem, the problem solver. Part number K8361. Here's what the new ones look like. You got the bushings. And you've got the spacer. So what usually happens is the spacer cracks. And then you have all this space and the radius arm will go back and forth. Uh, your tires will wear out and you won't be able to set the alignment. So it's uh, it's not optional. It's got to it's got to be replaced. All right, let's see. One last thing I want to talk about is the rear end. One way to tell what rear end you have is to open the door of your truck and look on the tag. Locate axle and the code. Then you can Google, and it'll tell you what rear differential you have unless it's been replaced. For example, this is an 86. That means that this is a seven and a half inch rear end, open diff, the 373 gear ratio. So, the problem, there are two problems with this rear end. First, it's a seven and a half inch rear end and has tendency to break spider gears. You got these small gears in there, they break and then you screw. I've busted three of them in the last 10 years. Sec so it, first it's not it's not durable enough. Second is it's an open diff. This truck came with an open diff uh, rear end. That means that driving in the snow or rain one tire with the least amount of traction is going to spin. So it might be okay for a four-wheel drive truck but for a two-wheel drive truck basically a one-wheel drive truck so I've decided to upgrade mine so let's talk about the options all right so these trucks came with the seven and a half inch open diff which is this truck has second they came with the seven and a half inch rear end with the limited slip differential so it's still a weak rear end but both wheels are gonna give you traction they're going to spin at the same time because there are clutches in there. So much better for traction. Still a piece of shit rear end. Not durable enough. Second option, I think it came on four -wheel, some of the four-wheel drive trucks, is an 8.8 .8, uh, open diff rear end. It's durable, but once again, one-wheel peel. Not I wouldn't recommend messing with it. There's so many of these trucks at the... At the junkyards, you can find an 8.8 .8 with the limited slip. That's what this one is, and it has 373 gear ratio. You can find some with four uh, with a different gear ratio if you want to. Just look on the tag. So there's another option, a better option for some people, not for me, would be 8.8 .8 rear end out of a Ford Explorer. I believe 95 up to 2002 came with a straight axle 8.8s and disc brakes. Uh, they also have 31 spline axles. What that means is that this is an axle. It goes all the way and it goes into a, a limited slip. So this axle has 28 splines. The axles in Ford Explorers have 31 splines and they're actually bigger too. So it's a much durable axle. And it has disc brakes. Unfortunately, you have to cut these off on the Ford Explorer. And you have to weld them on here, actually opposite. On Ford Explorer, this mount for the leaf spring is actually on this side. Shock mounts are different too. So for that reason, I decided to go with the Ford Ranger. It's a... I'm going to unbolt this one. I'm going to bolt this one in. There's not going to be any problems. I don't need 31 spline axles because it takes uh, quite a bit of power, probably like seven, 800 horsepower to break a 28 spline axle or doing something really, really dumb, like putting it, I don't know, really dumb. Second, I don't want to mess with disc brakes. They're great for most people. 
For me, drum brakes are fine. They're simple. My truck doesn't have ABS. Don't need it. So, that's another weakness on these trucks. Let's see what else. I think that's about covers it. It only took me 27 minutes. Well, what is it? To cover all the stuff. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, you can like it, and you can share it, and do whatever. Uh, you can comment. Uh, let me know if you need anything else. I'll try to make another video. So, I gotta get back to work. Thanks. Thank you guys for watching this video, and have a good day. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on there. Almost forgotten. One thing that's been driving me crazy on both of my trucks is the dome light does not like to work. And it's due to the sensor that's in the door jam. There is a switch that opens and closes as you open and close the door. It likes to jam up. They're not very reliable and you have to pull the whole thing apart to replace it. So, that's another thing. Total garbage. But you got to replace it if you want your dome light. As you can see, mine is not working. So, on that note, have a great day.